So we're live. Can you guys hear me okay? And does anybody ever do a podcast where they don't say, can you hear me okay? Looks like my mic's working. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Or better yet, just comment. I go that way. OGMTB, that's so sweet that you say I sound great. You sound great yourself. All right, awesome. Got 22 people in here already. Not bad, not bad. How many of you have been paying attention to this Crime Pays Forward fundraiser that I started doing? Give me a thumbs up for that one. We had 28 people in the room and only four thumbs up, so... The way this always works is the more you thumb it up, the better it does. So, so give me some thumbs up. <laughs> Ricky, the workshop only looks good because I cleaned it up earlier. You should have seen it. It was a complete disaster a couple hours ago. Andrew, I am going to Creek, but I'm probably going to go tomorrow. Um, probably going to go tomorrow and then probably going to go to Thunder on Saturday and then maybe mountain creek again on uh sunday <laughs> jason don't give away my secrets i guess it wouldn't be a live chat without one of these right so we got that and we have my favorite polar seltzer the pink one right there backwoods biker yes i am coming to go fest this year OG MTV. No, I did not find anybody that stole my bike. However, um, we got a we got a call to the Reeb shop the other day from a dude that lives in Santa Ana, and he said that he's he was uh, he's a bike repair guy, and he was at a taco stand that was only a couple blocks away from where my bikes were taken from and he heard a really cool sounding free hub and turned around and it, and he knew that the person riding the bike seemed out of place and just the bike seemed out of place um and didn't really think anything of it and they saw it a couple days later and same guy with a dog this time and he said that it was definitely my bike and then i literally spent urban wheeler thank you for the super chat and all this money is going to uh, all this money is going to my candy donation. But if you're thinking of donating any money tonight, don't do anything yet because um, I'm going to tell you about a cool little contest I'm doing. So I need your help. Can you guys comment when you see a live chat like this? Is there a, is there a name for the live chat? Can you see that I put up a link to a that'll take you to my candy fundraiser? I know it's probably going to take you out of this chat, but just let me know if you see. Uh, anywhere in this hyper chat or anywhere in this um, title, if you see a link to, to something. Just give me a thumbs up or a yes or whatever. All right, it's not a hyperlink. Okay, I'm gonna see if I could put it in the description here. All right, so I just posted a link right now and there's 35 of you. So if you click on that link, it's probably gonna take you out of the super chat. So if you're listening, don't do it just yet. Um, but here's what I'm trying to do. I set up, if you're familiar with my Crime Pays Forward fundraiser, I'm trying to raise money for Candade this month. We have um, a whole bunch of bike donations going on and we need some funding. And it all ties back to my bike theft that happened back in April. I'm trying to recoup a, an amount of money equal to what was stolen from me and then pay it all back to Candade in a big donation, $25,000. So if you've been on my YouTube channel um, in the past week or so, you probably see me talking about it nonstop and that's all because it's for a good cause. So the link that I just put up takes you to a page that I just set up earlier this afternoon and I set a goal for a thousand bucks. I don't know if we can make a thousand bucks tonight, but we'll, we'll try. And the way it's gonna work is if it gets to 500, I'm gonna raffle off one of these Pearl Izumi jerseys. I'm sure that you've seen me wearing it in all my videos, stuff like that. There was only 50 of these made. So um, 
they're really, really hard to get. And I probably took eight of them. So there's probably 42 in existence. Um, so if you if we make it to $500 at 10 o'clock tonight, I'm going to raffle off to one person. If we make it to $1,000, we're gonna cap it at $1,000. So you can't keep, keep donating. So the quicker we get there, meaning the more money you donate, the quicker we get to a thousand bucks and then um, all that money goes directly to Candade. And if it's if it's 10 people at a hundred bucks, you got a better chance than if it's a hundred people at 10 bucks or whatever. Um, and if we make it to a thousand bucks, I'm gonna give the highest donor a jersey. So there's no raffle, you just get it for donating them the highest amount tonight. And then I'll donate two more. So I'll actually end up giving away three if we make it to that thousand bucks. And without, a go without going out of this window, um, without going out of this window, I could see if anybody donated to it yet. And I'm guessing probably not, but all right. The only person that donated to it so far was me giving 10 bucks. So if you want to contribute, click on that link that I just posted. I'm going to post it again. I'll just keep posting it in the chat every now and then. So you can click on that link. It'll take you to the fundraiser. You can make a donation. Um, and it all goes 100% to Candade. We'll try to raise some money for them tonight. All right. I also had a uh, bunch of comments on my community page um, from a guy with some really awesome topics for tonight's live chat. Um, Ricky wants to watch the chat, but his mom's actively making him go to sleep. So, sorry. Have your Ricky have your mom make a donation. If you win, I'll send you an email or something like that. You'll still know. We'll, we'll, you'll, we'll let you know if you win. Uh, what's up, XC Ben? Kenny, am I coming back down to Philadelphia anytime soon? I definitely want to go check out those dirt jumps. Um, if you've been looking at my Instagram page, I got a new Reeve dirt jump bike, and it's really awesome. And the Philly pump track looks great, so I want to get there soon. Um, hey, everybody watching. 39 people in the room and only seven, 17 thumbs up. So if you're watching, give a thumbs up. Um, all right. Payday is tomorrow. Matt, you can put it on a credit card and, and it all goes to the kids. And if you if payday is tomorrow, donate tomorrow. All this money is going 100% back to Candid. So the whole reason, I'm probably going to tell this story five times on this live chat tonight. The whole point, if you watch the video, <laughs> somebody give me a thumbs down already, Jason. Um, so the whole point of this fundraiser that I'm doing this month is if you're familiar with my channel and you're familiar with me, I'm sure you probably heard that I got all my stuff jacked in Santa Ana back in April. And yes, I'm an idiot for leaving my stuff in my van. We don't need to get into that, whatever. But at the time, I was super surprised about how everybody reached out to me, offering to give, uh, donate me money personally, told me to start a GoFundMe. Um, people were, um, offering me free camera gear and whatever. Everybody was being super, super generous to me. And I was hoping that I would have some insurance money that would help cover it. And I was hoping that um, my sponsors would help me out. So I just wanted to like take some time and told everybody to hang hang tight on their generosity. I was going to try to figure it out. So now four months later, if you follow my YouTube channel, you see that I got new bikes. I'm all set, got new camera gear. Everything's good but I want to take everybody up on the generosity that they offered back in April. So I got this idea to do a fundraiser with Candade and try to win back 25, or not try to win back, try to get people to donate $25,000 that will go a hundred percent to Candade. And that will go totally towards putting more kids on bikes. And if you're not familiar with Candade, it's a nonprofit. We do things for underprivileged kids. So a lot of times, these are kids that can't afford bikes, can't afford musical instruments. We go in, we'll donate to an entire first grade, second grade class. So um, that's the whole point of the fundraiser. So that's why we're on here tonight. There's a link in the super chat. If you scroll around, I'm going to post it again. You could go to, you can, it's probably going to take you out of the chat for a minute, but you go to this page, you can make a donation. If we get up to 500 bucks, I'm going to, I'm going to raffle off one of these Pearl Azumi jerseys. Doesn't look super cool in the bag. Now I'm going to take it out of the bag because it'll look better. And like I said, there's only 50 of these in existence. And I probably took about eight of them. So there's probably only 42 of these in the world. And it probably costs 80 bucks to buy if you wanted to buy it, or probably even more. So if we get to 500 bucks, 
I'm going to raffle off one of those to the people donating. And the way that I'm going to know who donated is because, come on, recognize my face here. Um, it's going to take you to a page that I set up, and it's the Jersey fundraiser. And come on, people, look at this. There's only, well, it's kind of blown out from the light, but it's going to tell you who donated. And right now, there's only $10 donated, and it was from me because I had to donate something to start this chat. So if nobody else donates tonight, I'm winning the jersey. All right. Um, trail features hit the dislike button. Trail features is, an, is another friend of mine with a YouTube channel. He has a fundraiser going on. That's one of the cool things. If you're watching this video and you want to go to that page and set up a fundraiser, you can set up a power your people page and then rally your friends to donate to you, which will all go to, um, which will all go to the collective twenty five thousand bucks. All right, so let's have some some fun tonight. If anybody has any questions for me, put them in the comment section. But I got some questions earlier on my YouTube page from some folks, um, and I'm going to read them now because there are some pretty good questions to talk about on tonight's live chat. Um, Oh, sick. Urban Wheeler just donated 25 bucks. All right. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Maybe it didn't refresh. So, and also thank you to these super chats that are coming in. Eric McDonald with five bucks and Rum Dog. And I know there was a $20 one and Urban Wheeler on here with 20 bucks. Um, I had the chance to ride with Urban Wheeler lat two weeks ago in Portland, Oregon. It was awesome, super fun trail. The video that I just posted today on my YouTube channel was the ride with him. Super fun shuttle run. Um, all right. So Joseph Comer wants to know, what's a good faster rolling rear tire to pair with the Martello in the front? Barzo, Mezcal, or Peyote? Um, I spent a lot of time riding the Mezcal. Um, I usually, honestly, I run the, uh, the Martello front and rear, but the Martello... Mezcal would be a pretty good combo. And the Barzo and the Mezcal are both available in a 235 now. So it's a little bit more voluminous tire, unless you want to go for like a 225 or something like that. It kind of depends on where you're riding. I ride on the East Coast, mostly in New Jersey, and it's pretty rocky. So you don't want to go too skinny with your tire. And I've noticed like lately, the, the fatter I go with tires, the better they feel. I've, I've even been running a 26 in the front, which is something that I never really did. Um, I was always a two, three, five guy front and rear. Um, but it almost feels like with the two niner, the two six feels pretty sweet in the front with when I used to ride a 27.5, a two, three, five felt pretty big. When you make that diameter of the wheel bigger tire kind of sort of maybe has optical illusion or just rides a little bit narrower. So that two six is feeling pretty sweet in the front. So yeah, Joe, I would go with the Martello Barzo or Mezcal in the back. And it's just depend depending on where you ride, you know, just look at the tire profile. If it's, uh, you know, if it's more hard pack or if it's going to be looser soil, you know, just make your decision. Um, all right. Andrew Vale, do I have any advice on getting a sponsor? That is a really good question. You know, there's a bunch of different ways to get sponsored. I've been riding professionally a really long time. When I got started, it was quite a bit different than it is nowadays because, Nowadays, you could be sponsored just for social media, just for Instagram, just for YouTube, and you know you might not want to even worry about results. So it really depends on what you're doing. If you're if you're racing and versus free riding, you know racing results are still key. I think the main reason you really you know it's still easier to get sponsored with a, with results racing is because there's usually a lot of media involved with those races. So you know somebody puts on a race. And then there's going to be people there to cover it. So if you win the race, you're going to get coverage, whether it's on a local website or magazines, if, they're, if they even exist nowadays, something like that. But somebody's going to cover that win and it's going to get visibility for your sponsors. Um, if you enjoy free riding or I, I always enjoyed, enjoyed trials riding, which there was a comp competitive side to it, but it wasn't very big. So in my case, I would compete at trials. And then I would use those competition results to go get demos. And I would tour around to different bike shops and mountain bike festivals. And then the shows were really the visibility that my sponsors needed because 10, 15 years ago, there wasn't YouTube. 
And then, you know, past five, 10 years or whatever, online media has gotten more popular. Um, so that's why I've kind of moved away from the trials demos a little bit more because I've always just enjoyed showing people the way I like to ride. And in the past, you had to drive around the trailer and set up obstacles in the parking lot of a bike shop or a festival and whatever and do tricks. And nowadays, you don't have to do that. I can go out and ride any trail and put it on YouTube and, and allow you, you viewers to watch it and hopefully inspire you and have fun and all that kind of stuff. So if you are into free riding, I'd say you got to make a ton of content. It's going to take a while to get YouTube channel going. It's going to take a while to get an Instagram following, but try to do good, authentic content. That's hopefully aspirational. That makes people excited about riding bikes. And, um, and, uh, I'm, I'm reading email messages that are coming in right now. And if you're racing, I would focus on getting the best results possible while having fun. But social media is still important for racers to try to make yourself a little bit more attainable to the average person. You can't just like put your head down, win races, and think that it's super marketable nowadays. You, you got to win those races and be cool to people. Um, all right. Uh, Asau or whatever has a jefflanoski.com cap that I gave to him at bike 2000 here in the UK. That is really, really, really awesome. And that's cool blast from the past. I remember getting some uh, baseball hats made right before that event. Bike 2000, that was 2000. That was like when having your own web domain was kind of like a big deal. And I remember I had some t-shirts made and some hats with jefflanoski.com and I don't know. People still have websites and stuff like that, but nowadays there's like other platforms and stuff like that. But yeah, it was pretty sweet. I remember those hats very well. Um, all right. Andrew says, I have like, I have a ton of like 50% off sponsors, but how do you get the next step? Should I email some of the companies and ask them, wait for them to ask me, Andrew, I'll tell you that I've been riding my bike professionally for 23 years and I could probably count on one hand uh, the times that somebody asked me to sponsor me. Whether you're, when I was getting started, I was constantly sending out resumes to everybody possible. Um, and then once you get established, people always assume that you're happy or whatever. So whenever I was riding for different brands, you kind of got to put some feelers out there if you, if you want to look for sponsors, because if you have a 50% off sponsor from, um, a grip company or something, every other grip company is going to think that you're totally happy. And it's, it's pretty rare for somebody to go asking you. I'm sure there's other pro riders that might tell you differently, but like I said, I can count on, on one hand, the amount of times that a mount a company approached me and asked me. Um, all right. Another one from the UK. Oh no. Same one from the UK. Um, Oh, so you went to my ride along in in Lions in May. I had five weeks in Denver with his old trials riding buddy from back in the day. Going to go again next month for more Moab and maybe try horse seas bench. Um, if you're going to be in Moab and for outer bike, I'm going to be there. And I might possibly even be going back to horse seas bench after that. So we got 38 people in here. If you just tuned in. I'm putting up a link in the comment section here. So that link is going to take you to a page that I set up so you could donate to it. And then that way, since it's in its own specific donation, all this money goes to my crime pays forward um, fundraiser. But if you donate to that one, um, we're trying to make a thousand bucks tonight, which is probably a little ambitious. If we make it to 500, ooh, we're at 120 bucks already. So right now we have we have a bunch of twenty five dollar supporters. We're we're well over a hundred bucks. So this isn't updating it, so it's probably even more. But we got like five people or six people that are in, and if we make it to five hundred bucks, we're gonna pick from those people to win a jersey. If we make it to a thousand bucks, we're gonna take the highest donor, um, and I'm gonna give that highest donor a jersey, and then I'll raffle off two more. So basically. The bigger donation, the less people are entered, and the better your chances to win. And right now we're at 120 bucks towards this uh, towards this, this raffle. So I just put the link in the comment section. So if you're watching, I know it's a pain in the butt 
to click that link and leave the super chat. Maybe do it in another window, copy it, and then you can keep this, uh, this you keep this chat going. We're trying to win, we're trying to raise some money tonight for Candaid. This is for the Crime Pays Forward fundraiser that I started back at the beginning of the month. And if you're just tuning in now and you didn't hear the backstory, basically it's trying to recoup the value of everything that got stolen from me back in April, and we're going to give it all to Candaid. So. $25,000 is a lot of money, and it's about 250 bikes that are going to go to underprivileged kids. All right. <clears throat> so, Matt Whitley says he's got to go, but he's going to donate tomorrow. So, thank you so much, man. Uh, it's now through the end of the month. So, anything you can give to this donation is going to be awesome. All right. MB Schick is an old dude and a former road racer. So, I'm familiar with hitting the ground hard. Just wondering what's the worst injury or scariest crash you've had. So, uh, so I went for about 15 years without ever breaking a bone. And it started to get to the point where I, it would make me nervous telling people that I never broke a bone. Um, and then about 15 years into my career, I was messing around in the snow with my buddy Iron Chase. And we were hitting some, we were hitting a portable ramp to a, to a dirt landing that was in his backyard and the dirt dirt landing had a retaining wall made out of wood and we kept moving the ramp back and moving the ramp back and this was in february so it was an unseasonably warm day the ground was pretty frozen and we were pedaling in and ramp and as we made the ramp get further it kept getting warmer out the ground kept getting slower and one time i came in i hit it i went to jump over my handlebars because i was going to come up a little bit short and i did like the ultimate shinner and landed with both shins right on the edge of the railroad ties and I broke my tib fib. So that was my first really bad injury. Um, then I had, then I was just cruising around on a cross country ride, kind of daydreaming and I clipped a tree and broke my collarbone. That was about five years ago. And that took a while to heal up. And as soon as it got, I, I did that in September. I think it was better by the end of December. And then it took me a couple months to kind of get back in the swing of things. And then I was in Austin, Texas, doing my first ever demo for Oscar Blues at the Burning Camp Festival. So um, probably people thought I was drunk because I wiped out at a beer festival, but I was setting up for the festival and I went to walk around my course and give it a safety check. And I walked out on one balance beam and I forgot to bolt something down and it collapsed and I fell and broke my wrist. So I still have the, the scar right there. So that was another injury that... I wasn't even on my bike. It was totally stupid. So my three biggest injuries, one was hitting jumps in the snow that I shouldn't have been doing. One was riding down the trail daydreaming on the easiest trail ever. I just wasn't really paying attention and I hit a tree. And then the other one was setting up my course and I fell off it on my feet. So um, I don't have a very good track record on my feet. I, I tend to be a little bit better on my bicycle. All right, 37 people and 31 thumbs up. That's pretty good. Um, if you're just joining in now, see see a couple new people showed up. There's a link in the, the chat section where you could enter to win one of these Pearl Izumi jerseys. So if you click it, it's gonna take you out of the, the chat for a few minutes, but it might be worth it because you could win a jersey tonight. All right, let's see. Um, so, MB Stick just saw that Candidate is based about 15 miles from where where he lives or she lives. So yeah, Candade was originally founded about six years ago. I probably should know the exact day um, by Oscar Blues. There was a huge flood in Lyons, Colorado and a lot of townspeople needed help and that's where Oscar Blues was founded. So they started Candade to help out those folks. And one of the first things they did was start canning drinking water for people after the whole entire town of Lyons flooded. So that's where they got the name Candade and now it's a standalone nonprofit. We do bike donations, musical instruments, skateboards. Um, we give money to trail advocacy things. Basically, anytime there's a community in need, we try to help them out. And all the money with my donation is going directly to Candade and it's going directly to the Tread to Trails program. So trying to get more kids on bikes. All right. Hey, Clint Griffin is here and he said he just made a donation. Clint, I saw that, so thank you very much. Um, 
You love seeing me get kids on bikes and let you know the next time I am through town. I will absolutely let you know the next time I'm through town. It's going to be this fall. And if you live, um, Clint, I'm drawing a blank. If you live anywhere in Western Indiana, you got to go by Griffin bike park. It's really, 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 really awesome. So Clint comment where it is because I, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on where it is, but it's a really awesome bike park with a really awesome story. And I have had a video from it from last year. So you can check out my channel and see all about Griffin Bike Park. But it's uh, Terra, Terra Hoot, Terra Hoot, Indiana. Really awesome. Definitely go check it out if you're anywhere. You wouldn't expect to have really fun, good mountain biking in Western Indiana, but it's really, really awesome. All right. Uh, all right. Never broke anything big, but he did have broken a bunch of fingers and tacked a wheel. Not good. All right. <laughs> and he writes, all right, good. The candidate story makes sense now. Hadn't made the connection. I keep getting uh, little emails from my friend Alyssa at Candid because I guess it's auto-generated that woohoo, somebody donated to the donation. So that's pretty sweet. All right, we're still at 120 bucks. We've been stalled out there for a little bit. So if you're watching this, live chat and you want to contribute to um, the bike don't to the to the fundraiser that I set up you can click on the link that's in the chat I'm gonna post it again right now and you can make a donation it goes hundred percent to Candade and then all that money well all that money goes hundred percent to Candade and I'm gonna choose one winner out of a donor from tonight so if you donate your name is on that list from tonight then I'm gonna pick something Oh, trail feature says nope 220 now. I wonder if that was I don't think it was trail features. He's a little too he's a little too cheap. <laughs> I wish I could tell you every single time I look at my Instagram how Joe from Trail Features trolls me. He always gives me a hard time, but he's a super cool dude, so I I let it slide. Let's see. I don't know why my phone doesn't update. Oh yeah, two hundred and twenty bucks. Todd Creech, Creech with a hundred dollar donation. Awesome, good work, guys. So we're at two hundred twenty bucks. We got seven hundred and eighty to go, and we got a half hour to do it. I think, I think we could do it. Um, <laughs> trail features is broke AF. Too much camera gear. I hear you, buddy. Who has any questions to ask me tonight? I feel like I'm like, I got all this stuff I'd love to talk about and give my opinion. So if you got any questions, um, Trail Features did donate a hundred bucks, but that was on his donation page. This was just for tonight because I'm trying to do like a special fundraiser. So he did give a hundred bucks and you know, his prize is me calling him my friend. So that's that's his gift for a hundred bucks. You guys can win a jersey tonight. Um, Beardy McBeardison, if you want the jersey, you got to. <laughs> um, if you want to, if you want that jersey, click on the link and make a donation. I keep putting it in the uh, comment tab. So Trail Features has a really good, um, a really good question. What was the hardest and most easy trick that I learned? So that is a. That's a good that's a good question because if you look at the analytics on my channel, my audience tends to be uh, 25 to 55 and predominantly male. So I think that when some of the some of the easy or some of the tricks that I learned that were probably the most valuable, like bunny hopping and stuff like that, you just learn as a kid riding around town. So when you're like 13, 14, 15 years old, you don't even realize how much hard work that you're putting into it. But when you're, you know, a 20 something or 30 something and you're either at college or work or whatever and you're getting on your bike, all those minutes and hours feel like so much time. So um, I would think that I probably spent the most amount of time trying to learn how to bunny hop, I would think. But I did that when I was pretty young. So it didn't really feel like a lot of time as I as I got a little bit older and I was, you know, late teens or whatever and I got into trials. I remember just learning how to track stand was really, really difficult. And the thing that's uh, such a pain about track standing is 
it's so hard to learn and it looks so easy. Like when you do a track stand, right? It looks like the easiest thing in the world, but when you try to track stand, it's impossible. So something like that is super frustrating. And I feel like a lot of people that uh, try to learn a lot of those tricks, they're, they're really hard and they're frustrating, but they're foundational moves that you kind of really want to learn. And I think that trials in particular isn't super popular anymore because nowadays with pump tracks and dirt jumps and free ride trails, you know, average teenage kids rather going to go hit jumps or ride downstairs or whatever versus trying to just learn how to track stand. Um, but bunny hopping was probably the, the trick that took me the longest to, to learn. Um, track standing definitely took me less time, but I, but I know that it probably felt like a lot more work. And I would say that, um, an easy trick that is a trick that came easy was probably just wheeling. And again, it's just because you learn those things when you're a kid and you don't, you don't worry about the time and whatever. So if you're watching the channel and you're an adult and you're struggling riding technical terrain and stuff like that, my biggest um, advice would be to go out on your bike once a week, once every couple weeks for an hour or two and just go play on your bike. Because if you go for a ride with your friends, and you're doing your normal weekly loop or whatever, and there's a tricky section, and you don't want to hold up your friends, you just want to get through it. And you know, if you if you screw up, you just wait till next week. If you're doing a weekly ride, that's 50 tries a year. And when we're riding trials, like I literally would sit there, and I'm not even exaggerating, try things 50 or 100 times in an hour. So if you just go play on your bike, you could practice that same section of trail. 15 times in 15 minutes and then just learn it. And then instead of taking 15 weeks to do that, just go and session that thing that's been giving you trouble. And then next time you go with your friends, you just do it. You're the trail boss and all that hard work pays off. Um, there you go. Daily MTB rider, ride your bike every single day. That's definitely, uh, definitely is a good mantra. So Jace McConnell wants to know, will Reeb ever make a dedicated downhill bike? We have been uh, prototyping something that one of the guys that was testing, it was riding it with a dual crown fork. But uh, I think that we'd probably go shorter travel. Like right now, our suspension bike is a 29er with 145 millimeters rear. We would most likely go shorter first before we went to a full blown downhill bike. Just that's where the, the bulk of the market is. You know, we're trying to focus mainly on trail biking and stuff like that. All right, um, Joseph Comer, what, what is he saying? Did he dream what? Um, is Victoria still donating to Candade when you purchase through their website with your referral code? That is a really good question. So if you go to Victoria.com and use code Jeff Lenoski, you'll save 20%. And you'll get free shipping. So that's a sweet deal. But on top of it, they're going to give 10% of those sales for this month to Candade. So not only do you save a bunch of money and you get free shipping, but you're also uh, indirectly donating to Candade. So that's pretty sweet. And thanks for trail features for jumping in there. Um, JP, what's my favorite trail in Western North Carolina? Um, I would still say that I like Bennett Gap a lot. Um, Bennett Gap is fun. Farlow Gap is super fun. I like riding um, Black Mountain. I couldn't tell you some of the names of the trails, but riding Bent Creek is super fun. Um, I don't really know a lot of the names of the trails there, but those are good. Riding around DuPont is awesome. Riding, riding in Western North Carolina is probably, uh, whenever somebody asks me, I tell them that's my favorite place to ride in North America because it's the same terrain from New Jersey that goes down there. It's just much more, uh, much more epic down there, but the dirt feels the same. The rocks feel the same, same type of trees, all that vegetation. So it feels like I'm riding back home in the Appalachians and everything. It's just way more epic down there. So it's just, it's just more of what I like to ride. All right. Um, Berm Grizzly. If I ever make it to the North Carolina, South Carolina, and do a charity ride for beginners, I'll rally the troops and would be gnarly. We can get many people out there and help your fundraiser. So Berm Grizzly, I plan on being back in 
Brevard this fall for sure. So just follow me on social media on either my YouTube channel or on my Instagram. So that's something else I should get into while, while we're all sitting here. We got 36 people watching. Um, first of all, I'm posting it again right now. If you haven't donated yet, and Joe, if you're if you're still on here, do a quick update and let me know what the what the donations up to right now. I think we're we're at 220 bucks. So I just posted a link, and if you donate tonight, I'm gonna raffle off 100 or I'm gonna raffle off a jersey if we're below 500. dollars If we make it to the full thousand, 246, sweet. So if we make it to the full thousand, I'm gonna give the highest donor um, a jersey, and then I'm gonna raffle off two more. So we'll be giving off giving out three. And there's only 50 of these made. They're super sweet. They're totally custom by Perlazumi. Um, you can't buy these anywhere. I just use them for candid fundraisers and stuff like that. So they're, they only made 50. I think I probably took about eight myself. So there's less than 40 in existence. And we're raffling off potentially three tonight if we make it to that thousand bucks. And we have about, about 23 minutes. Hey, Mr. Tonka's in the house. What's up, dude? How are you? Um, so one other thing that I should probably talk about tonight is some of the group rides I have coming up. If you live in New Jersey, well, if you live in Connecticut, I'm doing a, uh, it's North, Northwestern Connecticut. Um, it's on candade.org and it's also on my event page, trailboss.bike. I'm doing a ride there on next Tuesday, I think the 23rd or 24th, you could go to candade.org. We're doing a fundraiser ride. Um, it's going to be a, a ride with me. We're going to ride the local trails. We're going to break it down, do some tips. And then that evening, we're going to do a bike donation. And then the following day, we're going to donate. And then the weekend of the 28th and 29th, if you live anywhere near New Jersey, um, Connecticut, Mass, whatever, it's the New Jersey Mountain Bike Festival. Um, we are doing a Candade ride on Saturday. So I think it's like a $25 donation. That is all going to go to this uh, Crime Pays Forward fundraiser as well. We're going to go out, ride Ringwood State Park, break those trails down, give you some riding tips on the trail. And then that evening, we're going to be building a bike, building bikes for a donation that's happening on Monday down in Asbury Park, New Jersey. And the New Jersey Mountain Bike Festival takes place on Sunday. So that's going to be a super fun time. And then if you live in Utah, I'm going to be at Outer Bike. So I'll be at Outer Bike. And uh, if you're going to Outer Bike, it's super fun. Moab's one of my favorite places to ride. We're going to be setting up rides Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The guys from Outer Bike last year set me up with my own free sh uh, own shuttles just for my ride. It was super awesome. We would fill them with 20 people and we would, we would have our own personal shuttle. It was really awesome. So if you're going to um, Moab, make sure you check trailboss.bike and then you could sign up. Uh, and get on one of those rides. All right. Alyssa Lyle's on here. Woohoo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right, Jack, I'll see you at the New Jersey mountain bike fest. Um, I have been to Georgia a bunch of times, but I have not ridden blankets Creek. Um, but I keep hearing so much stuff about that. Um, so I got to get down there. I think, I think this fall is going to be the time. Uh, Chris Nagy, first time caller, first time listener going down to Piskin in two days. Do you think Reed branch will accept stra stragglers for overnight or camping for car cam or car camping? Yeah, they have, um, camping right there. If you're in North Carolina and you want to ride DuPont or Pisca, you can go to the Reed branch. They have camping. Chris, I don't know what the fee is, but it's, it's pretty cheap, like 20, 30 bucks or something. Um, you can camp there super safe. Nice Creekside camping, but yeah, they definitely have that. So you should go check it out. Um, we got 46 people in here. So that means we got some more people. So I'm posting up this link again. So I just put a link in the comment section. We're raffling off some jerseys tonight. They're one of a kind. Well, 50 of a kind. Pearl Izumi jerseys that they did just for me. Uh, they have Reeb, Pearl Izumi, Shimano, Candade on the sleeve. Little Trail Boss logo right here. Only made 50 of these. And I ended up with probably about eight of them. So there's only 42 out in the wild. And um, if you donate tonight, I'm going to choose one donor. If we're, if we're under 500 bucks, I'm picking one donor and we're going to 
raffle off one jersey at random. And we're going to do that live in probably about 20 minutes. And if we make it to that thousand dollars, I'm going to give away three jerseys, one to the highest donor. And then I'm going to randomly pick one other person and, uh, or two other people. And you'll both also win some, uh, win some stuff. So we got 50 people in here. Who's got some questions for me? Otherwise I do have some questions on my community tab from earlier. I put it out there if anybody had any questions for tonight. And I did have some pretty good ones, but I just never got to them. So I could, could bust those out. Yep, for Pisca camping, you could definitely check out the bike farm. And then also, um, you know, around Pisca, there's all kinds of just camping. Like you just basically camp wherever you want. So if you want to be at like the sweet spot with the restroom or whatever, Reed Ranch is awesome. Um, oh, Joe wants to see if you can see the trials bike over in the corner. Let's see. Um, that is my old Schwinn trials bike. So that was a bike that they made for me after I won the national championship in 2000. And they made that. And I'm still waiting for, I got the derailleur. I need a, a derailleur hanger for it. And then I have a chain guard. So I'm waiting for pedals and a derailleur hanger. And I'm going to put that bike together. And I was thinking of even trying to make a video riding that thing. And when you get on it, it's so, so, so tiny nowadays. It's kind of crazy um, just how small those bikes were. You know, I, we didn't even think that they were that small. But I think that modern day... Um, those are OG Maxxis tires back before they were super tacky. Um, so nowadays with trail bikes and enduro bikes getting so much longer that I feel like every bike feels so tiny that um, even my new Reeb Destroyer, the dirt jump frame is probably one of the longest, or it is the longest dirt jump bike I've ever had, but it, it feels totally, totally, totally comfortable. Um, do I get to ride with Ryan Leach very much? Ryan and I will bump into each other at different festivals and stuff like that. We have ridden, but it's not super often, but Ryan's still definitely one of my favorite people. So anytime I get to ride with Ryan, it's a, it's a good time for sure. Um, what do I think of the new Santa Cruz high tower? It's obviously not as good as a Reeb Squeeb, but you know, if you want to get something different, it's a pretty cool bike. My friend has been riding the mega tower Recently, my friend Lance, I put him in a bunch of my videos and he he likes that bike a lot. Um, all right, Saturday, October 26th is a rich Richmond Techie Scavenger Hunt. I've heard about that before and I wanted to, to get to that. So I might have to definitely put that on my calendar this year. Um, Shane, where could I get information on that? Like, is there a website for it or something? Or is it kind of just like underground or whatever? Um, so the guys in Richmond described it as to me as like, um, you go around and ride all the city parks, um, James river trail system and whatever. And you, you try to find like tech moves and it's like a scavenger hunt. It seemed really, really, really awesome. Um, trail features again, $271 out, out of a thousand. Come on. We can definitely get to 500 bucks tonight. If we get to 500, since it's or since we only have 15 more minutes, if we get like 230 more bucks, I'm gonna give away two jerseys, I think. So um, if you see that link that Trail Features just posted, you could click on that link and you could enter to win a jersey. So I'm basically you're gonna if you donate to that page, you're gonna be listed right there. And I'm gonna randomly pick a name and you could win a jersey. And if we get over 500 bucks, I'll give away two. We're under 500, we're giving away one jersey. If we're over 500, we'll give away two jerseys. If we make it to 1,000, we'll give away three. I think that's pretty fair. These jerseys would probably cost 100 bucks to, to buy, and they're like one of a kind. There's only 42 in existence because we made 50, and I took eight of them. All right, no front brakes. Sorry to hear the bike. Sorry to hear about the bikes. Just in my part. Thanks for all you do. Dude, thank you so much. That's really awesome, Eric. Um, I'm super surprised I never got those bikes back. I, I seriously thought, like, where are you going to take a 27.5 trials bike, which is like a uh, total unicorn or an extra large Reeb Squeeb painted red, has trail boss stamped in the bottom bracket and stuff like that. I honestly thought those bikes would show up. And it's four months later, 
I, we did get an anonymous tip last week from somebody at Reeb saying that um, I didn't get to finish this story earlier. So we did get an anonymous tip at the shop that somebody had seen my trials bike in Santa Ana at the corner of Dyer and Maine twice. So if you live anywhere near there, keep an eye out. Don't go near the person. Just take a picture. But apparently it was the same guy. First time he was just cruising it. Uh, the guy who called heard the free hub, thought it sounded a little special, cool, different, whatever. Um, took notice of the bike. Didn't really think anything of it because um, he's a he was like a bike repair guy, not like a crazy bike enthusiast. He just knew that sounded different. And then a couple <clears throat> a couple days later, saw the same guy with a dog on the same bike. Just thought that seemed out of place. Googled Reeb because the bike said Reeb on it and learned about the stolen bike and was like, that's definitely that, that guy's bike. That was two weeks ago. We got the phone call spent all last week calling the Santa Ana police department every single day for a week, trying to get the detective or the officer on the line. And every single time the main switchboard would put me through to supposedly where these guys were, it would just go to like a dead end phone call and it would hang up. So I finally talked to them, uh, maybe, Monday night and they're going to look for it, but it was like literally a week after we got that tip. Definitely a bummer. All right. So, um, Shane Alberson just gave 15 bucks and then said it was great riding with, Oh, and it was great riding in Pocahontas last year. That was, uh, that was super awesome. Pocahontas state park is definitely really, really fun. Um, yeah, they are pretty distinct bikes and even somebody right at a random spot park should notice them. I was super surprised. Like when, when all that stuff got stolen, I figured the camera gear, the computer instantly gone. Definitely not getting that back. $531 out of a thousand. Oh my God. You guys are seriously awesome. Um, they're going to be some stoked kids. So just for perspective, 531 bikes is like. Uh, my math was going to be way off there. I was going to be like, that's 50 bikes. That's five bikes. So five underage kids that probably couldn't afford bikes will get a bicycle and a helmet just from hanging out and talking tonight. That's pretty awesome. Um, okay. Joseph Comer wants to know, what's my thoughts on Industry 9 wheels and are the Hydra hubs as obnoxious as the old Torch hubs? <clears throat> I think that the Industry 9 Hydra hubs are literally the best hubs that I've ever used in my life. And when I first heard that the engagement was so tight, I thought that was a little bit less, a little extra because, you know, I was riding Shimano Saint hubs, they had faster engagement. Then I was riding uh, some Vittoria wheels last year, they had pretty decent engagement. And then I heard about the Hydras with less than a, less than a half a degree of engagement. I just figured like, this is ridiculous. Like it sounds cool, but are you really even going to notice? Um, and the answer is you absolutely notice. And I think the reason you do notice is because nowadays it's so common to have those 45 tooth chain rings, 51 in the back, whatever. So once you get to those really big chain rings, if you don't have that super tight engagement, your pedals travel a lot because it's taking so much chain to, to pick up that to pick up that larger diameter cog. So if you don't have that tight engagement, your pedals really do ghost pedal for, for quite a, a decent amount. So on the Hydra hubs, when I'm doing technical riding, every little stab that I do propels the bike forward. It's, it's pretty awesome. Like you can get in every single little jab of the pedals will give you a little bit of forward propulsion. And uh, so I definitely think that the Hydra hubs are worth it. Um, and as far as them being as obnoxious as the Hydras, I think that they sound really cool. It's, it's like a finer, um, like a higher frequency hum or something instead of like a loud ratchet with big gaps. It's just like a really tight zzz. I don't know if that was a good Hydra impersonation, but did the best I can. Um, all right, Trail Features is asking if we could hit 750 bucks. I'm going to post it. He just posted the link right there. I'm going to post it. What's the update? Are we still at 530 bucks? Um, Backwoods Bikers got to leave for tonight. Um, probably got to get up for school in the morning. Um, but thanks for hanging out, Backwoods Biker. Um, 
Do I think 26 inch with a steep head angle will ever make a comeback? I definitely do not think 26 inch with a steep head angle will ever make a comeback unless it's for a trials bike or a dirt jump bike. Um, I have a 29 inch hardtail that I've been posting a lot of videos on. Um, it's a bike that we're going to be making some announcements soon from Reeb, and it's really awesome. You could, I could take that thing to the bike park and ride any technical or any trail at the bike park, um, hang with my buddies on their full suspension bikes, cross country ride it, take it to the pump track. It's super fun at the pump track. But then I just got a 26 inch dirt jumper, and the same way. Um, I remember when I rode 26 inch mountain bikes, I would give my, I would go to Woodward and I'd give my bike to some of the guys and they'd get on it and comment how it was so flexy. And I didn't know what they were talking about because the mountain bike felt super stiff to me. And then you would get on a BMX bike and it's just so rigid, this, the chromoly cranks and the, the large diameter um, bottom bracket spindles and everything. I kind of feel like riding the, I was riding my 29 around the pump track a lot, loving it, thought it was super fast doing lots of doubles and whatever. Then I got the 26 inch dirt jumper. And just when you rail into those asphalt turns and you really put a lot of G forces in there, you definitely could notice that the bike is considerably stiffer. Um, yeah, so Ms. Tonka just said, Joe just said, hydras are quieter than most torch hubs. Yeah, um, I actually only had one set of torch hubs. I got my first, my first read that I got this year, because I just started riding the Industry 9 wheels this year. So the first squeeb that I got had Torch Hubs on it. Then my trials bike had the Hydra Hubs. Those bikes both got stolen. The first hardtail that I had had Hydra Hubs on it. And then all my new bikes that I've gotten since all have had Hydra Hubs. So I, I can't really compare it to Torch Hubs too much because I only had it on one bike and I rode it for a couple months and it got stolen. Um, but yeah, they seem they seem a little bit quieter. It's definitely like a finer, um, cooler, tighter sounding um, buzz or whatever. <laughs> Joe's out here doing the math. Forty nine people plus five dollars is two hundred and forty five dollars. Just saying, he is pretty good at math. He's just gonna leave it there. Um, yeah, Joseph, the 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 cassette gear that you're in definitely makes a, a huge difference. And that's really what I started thinking about. Cause um, if you're in a, if you're in your like 10 or 12 or 16 in the back or whatever, your pedals are going to feel like they're instantaneously engaging anyway. So it doesn't even matter really what kind of hub you have, but it's when you start getting into those bigger gears, it starts, that's when you could really feel like your pedals moving. So um Barry Watson tried to donate, but it says it wouldn't take it from Canada. I somebody had told me that uh, somebody had told me that they would that they had a PayPal channel or PayPal capability or something, but I didn't see it. So if you're if you're from Canada and you're watching the chat and you want to donate, keep an eye out because I'm trying to um, see if there is a PayPal option. Maybe we can get it up there in the next couple of days. Um, yeah, so Jack Adler, I9 hubs are cost prohibitive. What would be a less expensive alternative? Um, the I9 also sells just spokes that you, or wheels that you can build up yourself with you know different wheels and and um, not the aluminum spokes and everything like that. So that's a that's a cheaper um, alternative versus a system wheel um, would just be like buying a hub and building it up with a a wire spoke and a and a regular rim. But yeah, there's there's some other um, there's some other good options coming through um, as well. Chris Nagy says he's too broke for hydras because he donated all to the Crime Pays Forward party. All right, Andrew Vale wants to know how high I can bunny hop on my full suspension bike. I would say that I could probably bunny hop my full suspension bike. I I don't really know. I'm just guessing maybe. Uh, 30 inches or something like that. I could, if I do a punch where you where you bump your front tire into something, even if it's like a suspended log or a jersey bear or whatever, I can go about handlebar height, which I think is probably about 36 inches or maybe even more. Um, but as far as like a straight bunny hop, probably not super high. Like, well, I mean, it is, it is high. But when I 
did that world record bunny hop. I did 45 and a half inches, but that was on like a 26 inch hardtail, And I was bunny hopping all the time, literally every single day. So on that hardtail, I'd probably be pushing it to get close to 40 now just because I don't really bunny hop my bike every single day. So I'm obviously not as good as it. I could probably do that. You know, I could probably do a 26 inch hardtail or around 40 inches or so. And I would think a suspension bike, maybe around 30, maybe a little bit higher. I think, I think at like Sedona, Eric Porter and some of my buddies were doing 32. I could probably, probably do somewhere in that range. I would, I would hope enough to get over whatever kind of log is in the trail. <laughs> um, we're at $592. Nice guys. $602. Dude, you guys are awesome. We might have to keep this live chat going three more minutes, longer than three more minutes. Um, all right. Andrew Vale did 29 inches on his bunny hop a meter and he's only 13. That is awesome, dude. You, you better keep bunny hopping because I definitely was not bunny hopping 29 inches when I was 13. So if you got that, you should definitely, definitely keep at it because you definitely have some bunny hop skills and on his Yeti SB6. That's really awesome. Um, <laughs> Chris Nagy, all the foreign money is there for the taking, but Homeland Security shutting things down. Um, Barry Watson, I'm going to post a, Oh, Trail Features just posted it, and I'm going to post it right there, Barry, so you can see that link. Um, all right, Joe, Mr. Tonka is heading out. Uh, check out his YouTube channel. He does, He's been doing a ton to support this fundraiser. He has his own going, so... Definitely check out check out all these YouTube guys. Trail features, Eric at No Front Breaks. They're they're all totally helping out with this fundraiser. Uh, <clears throat> um, it's awesome to have guys I've only met a couple times reach out and and try to help a, a, an awesome cause. So also check out Mr. Tonka's Instagram page because you got a what is that thing called? Just like a balance board or whatever. It's like a, a skateboard on like a roller thing and he was doing kick flips on it yesterday and uh it was pretty sick looks like i would totally bust my ass if i tried doing it all right where are we at what's the fundraiser update here guys we got 53 people crime pays forward yes oh yeah gina regular guy mountain biking has a video too so check out regular guy mountain biking all these guys have been awesome helping out so much and uh you know even though it's all going to candidate i still totally see it as a big favor to me so i totally appreciate it dcm tv thanks for hanging out we got 56 people in here what's the uh <clears throat> thanks jack for donating with rgm tv um andrew vale wants to know what i think about e-bikes um, I think they're kind of cool. I don't really have a problem with e-bikes. Um, I know that they're like, it seems like they're much hotter topic in a lot of places where people ride more motorcycles. I think, uh, maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong on that, but my, my personal, uh, theory is like, I, we don't really hear a ton of it in New Jersey and stuff like that because we don't have a ton of guys riding enduro motorcycles or stuff like that. So I feel like if you live in Colorado or California and there's a lot of places where guys ride a motorcycle right here and you're trying to ride on your single track 10 feet away, you really don't want them coming on your single track and the e-bike thing kind of blurs the line because a lot of people think it's going to open the door to motorcycles and stuff like that. So from where I live and stuff like that, I don't see it as like as much of a, a problem. Um, I think they're, they're kind of fun to ride. They're a little bit weird because in my experience, it seems like if you have like kind of a flatter uphill where you can spin a high cadence, they're awesome. And it feels like it shuttles you right up and then coming down, they're cool because they're, you know, they're kind of heavy. So the, the suspended weight feels awesome. You could actually downhill on them pretty proficiently. Um, but the problem is I like doing like 
super technical clients and stuff like that. And the first couple times I ever got on them, I'd look at like a 20 foot hill climb or something that's real steep and think that the e-bike's just going to zip you right up that. And when you go to like real um, high torque, low cadence, the engines don't work the same. And it just feels like you're, you're pedaling like a 50 pound bike up the hill because it's not giving you back everything that you need to get up the hill. All right, so Eric no front brakes. He was riding up the road at Cat Mountain Trailhead, super steep pitch, and some guy blew past him on one. I was simultaneously forlorn and jealous. It's kind of weird. Yeah, like um, like I haven't ridden them a ton. I rode Aaron Chases at Highland Mountain Bike Park, and we were trying to get up the start ramp for the airbag, and just riding up like the regular downhill course that's like, you know, it'd be a, kind of a steep hill to ride up on your on your bike, but nothing too crazy on something like that. When you could just like spin it, spin a high cadence and if in a relatively easy gear, it just zips you right up. It feels like you have a tow rope or something like that. But then when we were trying to get up that real steep pitch and you're like really cranking on the pedals, it doesn't, doesn't feel like it gives you the same assistance, but it might've been just been the motor of what I was using. Um, so yeah, it just feels like you're like trying to pedal up it and pedal like a 50 pound bike now, but coming down, they're awesome. Chris Nagy needs a e-bike for Sterling State Forest. I always tend to think that uh, that it's that Sterling State Forest isn't super steep or anything like that. And then I'll do a ride there, and you look at the Strava data, and you end up that you did cl end up climbing quite a bit. <clears throat> Andrew Vale, where do you live? That you were riding at Glen Park. You're an East Coaster. I just rode Glen Park this afternoon with my buddy Bryce, and it was really really awesome. It's 10.03. What is the what is the fundraising at right now? Could somebody like copy and paste. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy the link. Does every single person watching this live chat even know what we're trying to raise money for tonight? Or or should I go over it again? If if you're not familiar with, with what we're doing here, um, we could talk about the fundraiser again. Uh six cent. All right, six twenty-seven fifty-five. Should we end it, or should we keep going for seven fifty? I think we should go for seven fifty. I think we would come up with six thirty-seven. I think that's too close. One hundred thirteen bucks. Trail features. You like those math skills? My mom was a math teacher, so I kind of. I don't know if I pride myself or if I just kind of impress myself when I try to do math problems real quick. Um, just south of Princeton, good mountain biking down there. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Uh, I did go to Sourlands Preserve recently. Did you go up there? Have you have you been to Sourlands Preserve? Other than other than that, it starts to get pretty flat in South Jersey. But I went to Sourlands recently, and it was really, really, really difficult. But I think that I did the loop wrong. I tried climbing counterclockwise and road up the freaking hardest trail ever. Um, Jeff Kowalski, definitely go to canday.org, sign up for that event. Um, and we'll see you in, see you in Connecticut. What's the name of the town, Jeff, if you're still watching, because I, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't think of it right now. Um, Flatwoods MTB, thank you so much for donating to Joe's fundraiser. It all goes to the same spot, so I appreciate all of it. Um, right, Colebrook, Connecticut. So next week, we're going to be in Colebrook, Connecticut, doing a bike donation. Then over the weekend, <clears throat> it's going to be at Ringwood State Park in New Jersey. And then the following week, if you live in Moab, I'll be out there. Um yeah, Chris, I I saw that. So Sourlands, everybody would send me pictures and stuff from Sourlands and say that was so awesome and I needed to go there. And my friend Lance and I went and I was too stubborn to to look at the map and I just figured we were going in the right direction. And it's super, super, super rocky, pretty, really steep in a lot of sections. And I decided to ride my Squeeb, which is 160 millimeter fork in the front and 145 in the rear with flat pedals. And it was really hot out. Then it started raining. I thought I was going to have an aneurysm out there. 
we we went there thinking that we were going to make a, a video and i only got two instagram clips out of it because it was, it was miserable we got to we got to try that one again sometime all right um Thanks for hanging out till 3.06 a.m. in the morning, man. $82 away from $750. So we got to get up to $750, guys. $82. Earlier I said the goal was $1,000, and if we made it to $1,000, I was going to give away three jerseys. We are going to give away three jerseys if we get to $750. So the highest donor is going to get a jersey for sure, and then we're going to raffle off two more if we get to that 750. When is the next time I'm doing a ride in New Jersey? Um, so Andrew, the, the last weekend of the month is the New Jersey Mountain Bike Festival. Come to Ringwood State Park. We're doing a fundraiser. Um, ride on Saturday so you can ride with me and all that money goes to Candade and then on Sunday is the mountain bike festival and we're doing another one uh, that day um, but I think that one might be sold out so if you want to ride with me you could um, Laura Slavin coming out of nowhere with ninety nine point nine nine dollars holy shit Thank you so much. That was really, 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 really awesome. Um, we have 42 people on here. So we should all give Laura 45 more subscribers. If you go to her YouTube channel, she completely sends it. They just built a brand new jump line at Thunder Mountain Bike Park. And it's literally the biggest jumps Thunder Mountain's ever built, or not Thunder Mountain, Gravity Logic has ever built. And um, if you... If you go to uh, my YouTube channel, you'll see a, a video of me riding them with my friend Lance Trappy, and we were both pretty petrified riding them. And we didn't even ride the whole entire line because the line wasn't done yet. And she went back there two weeks ago and did the whole line, first girl ever to do it, and she totally sent it. So she just donated $100 to this cause. So I think that all of you should go and subscribe to her YouTube channel. And I'm going to look right now to see how many she has because it should definitely be 40 people more at the end of this chat <laughs> all right let's see 530 subscribers she should definitely be at like 575 by the end of this thing all right what is our donation thing up to you guys let me get a uh, donation check so yeah thank thank you very much for that donation laura that was awesome I should do a group trials ride in NYC. That would be sick, but we'd probably all get run over by cars. No, no, no. It's for the it's for the subs. Let's see if anybody's subscribing. Let's see if two new subscribers. Come on, guys, if you're watching, make sure you subscribe to that channel. I don't know where the PayPal option is, Asal. I'm going to find that out. So if you remember, the, the fundraiser goes on to the end of the month, so you can check. And um, I'll get it up there in the next couple of days because I know that on the regular candidate site, you can make a donation. Um, <clears throat> trail features, $692, 126 in super chats is equal to $8,818. So I guess we're there. So now I need to go to this page, update this, and we're going to start picking some winners. All right. I know the anticipation is killing everybody. 
Um, <laughs> Andrew Vail wishes he had money, to, <laughs> wish he had money to spend, but he uh, spent it all. Oh, nice. But he spent it all on his bike. All right, so. Let's see here. It's got you 10 subscribers right there. Okay. Um, ooh, this is like Inception. I'm watching my own super chat on my phone. All right, I got the best way to pick some winners. So I have all, all the people that donated. I keep getting emails from Alyssa Lau right here. So I'm gonna swipe my phone and then I'm gonna click on, and you can see I'm looking at you right here. All right, we're gonna go that way. We're gonna go this way and we're gonna go like that. So the first person that won, is where does it say the name all right hang on i got somebody here and it was a hundred dollar donation oh todd todd creesh so you win for the hundred bucks and so todd creesh i'm gonna take a screen grab right here so i could and when you made that donation online i got your email address and everything so we're good with that so todd creesh First person that wins. Although, hey, uh, trail features, or if anybody else is paying attention, let me know if somebody donated more than a hundred bucks because I think it might be Todd. All right, so we got Todd. Now I'm gonna swipe around more. And we're going to go right there. And this one is Richard Broomer. So you you want a jersey. So I'm going to email you as well. I'm going to take a screen grab right here. All right. And so those are the two random winners. And then it looks like Joe Cox put in $229. So Joe will be getting the, the last jersey. So we got Robert Broomer, Todd Kreish, and, and Joe Cox at $229. So thank you very much, Manny, coming in with 50 bucks right now. Dude, that is awesome. Joe with the... Joe with the dentist buddy. Seriously, dude, that guy just like makes it rain. He set up a fundraiser. Um, he has his own fundraiser page and he donates to that thing. Uh, all right. So now you can see where all these Yetis come from. So everybody, let me just look at this right now because I can't believe this with my own eyes. Did we really hit a thousand bucks on here? Oh my God. I did not think that we were going to hit a thousand bucks tonight. So that is plus on the super chats, which was probably another couple hundred bucks or whatever. So we sat here and hung out and we got over a dozen kids on bikes. So um, thank you so much for, for pitching in. If you didn't get a chance to donate tonight or whatever, something that you could do is I'm always making Instagram stories about this fundraiser. If you follow me on Instagram, you could just share something. Try to just share this stuff to your friends. If you go to the Crime Pays Forward fundraiser page, you can set up your own Power Your People um, fundraiser page. And even if you only give $10, but you share with all your friends, they could donate to your page and all that money goes to Candaid. Um, but the main thing is just getting the word out there. The goal is $25,000, I think after tonight, we're probably at about, we're probably getting close to half of that. So I'm, it's pretty awesome. Um, we have some fundraisers coming up in Connecticut next week at uh, New Jersey Mountain Bike Festival. So we got to get there. 
thank you so much for helping these kids. Um, when all my stuff got stolen, it was probably one of the worst mornings of my life. And I knew that I had to try to turn that into something better. And with all of your help, it's been awesome. So uh, maybe we'll do another super chat next week. I try not to shake you down for as much, but uh, all of you are super, super, super generous tonight. And I appreciate it. And everybody at Candid really appreciates it. Um, posted a new video this afternoon from my trip to Portland. I did the urban ride last week. That was part one. This was part two. It was actually some trail riding. So uh, check that one out. And until next time, go out there and be a boss. <laughs>